Welcome to the live stream. I'm Jonathan Whitcomb. This is uh, Friday, April 9th, 2021. I'm in Murray, Utah. The channel here on YouTube is Protect Animal Life. And this live stream will last probably at least an hour, perhaps as long as two hours. But what is this involving here? Um, this is titled Pterodactyl Photos, Videos, and Sketches. Contact me here. If you need to, you can, we'll come back to this later. But uh, basically, I have um, seen a number of things. We'll start right into it. This photo has been around a long time. It's been online for quite a while. Well, what is this? Uh, what we really need to know to be able to make a good judgment about this is to get a providence, find out where it came from, the details about uh, where, where, where it was uh originating a particular book perhaps or a magazine or something like that i don't have it so all we have is just looking at it see what we can see with it okay let's look into this uh i've heard something on online that somebody said oh it's a small cowboy no it's it's not i know that hat or something like that hat it was before my time, long before I was born, but it looks to me something similar to the the, the Boy Scout hat or uh, something some something like the Boy Scouts in the early 20th century. And that is not a cowboy. It's not a small cowboy. It's a boy. It's a child. So what is he holding here? Of course, it's possible for something like this to be hoaxed. But for something to, somebody to play a hoax in this precise kind of way is problematical. It's, it's not that easy or that obvious or that much of a motivation for it. For example, what exactly is it? It uh, looks to be some like kind of rope and a long tail like pterodactyl, something or other. The, the shading looks reasonable, like the, the sun coming from the left, um, uh, shining on the uh, uh, outside wall of a, a building like a, a garage or something. And you see some uh, light somewhat reflected off the body and a piece of the wing. The tail is long, skinny, with some kind of structure at the end, which could be a flange of a ramp rhinkoid like a pterosaur, if this is genuine. But we don't have provenance, so what are we going to do? We're going to go now to the um, something we also have a problem with. It's a, what I named a few years ago, PTP. Um, uh, it's, uh, basically, we don't have provenance on this. That's the problem. And I wrote this book years ago in uh, 2017, as I recall. Uh, get the date. Uh, 2017, Modern Pterosaurs. I wrote this book specifically about this particular uh, photograph, or apparent photograph. It's, 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 it's a lot of study has gone into this by me and my, my associate, Clifford Piva, the physicist in California. Let's get into some of the things on this. Is it real? Well, some skeptics and critics have said, no, it's just been proven false. Well, not exactly. There is some uh, potential evidence in some circumstances show it could have been created for a TV show, uh, Freaky Links, possibly. Uh, I'm not totally convinced. I mean, it's, I could be totally mistaken. Maybe it was created by them. But the original uh, skeptical responses and the things that were or people responding to offline and online were uh, things such as, oh, it's an obvious Photoshop hoax, obvious. And other people say, oh, obviously people uh, got a canoe and they cut it in half and they made wings out of it. Well, none of those things hold up at all under close examination. <laughs> not at all. Uh, it's very controversial, but still, I stand by this book, even though I've withdrawn it, I've stopped the printing of it uh, a couple years ago or so, fairly recently. I stopped the printing of it, but not because I believe that it's, it has to be a hoax or, or I was totally mistaken. I didn't like to do it. You know what happened? Very vocal skeptics, maybe trying to make me look like a fool, I demanded, you know. Stop the printing of this, and I, the first my reaction, of course, is no, no, never do that, you know. But um, I finally came to realize 
when I printed this book, when I wrote it and I had it printed, published, uh, available on Amazon and other places, I was hoping, hoping somebody somewhere would tell me about an old photo and an old, old book or an old magazine. Because we have a number of persons I've communicated with and have reported to me that they are sure they've seen this in an old uh, book or old magazine in the, about the middle of the 20th century. And others say they've seen something like this about that time and maybe the 1960s. And I'm one of those people. I, I have a memory of something like this. I think I saw it in the main branch of the Pasadena, California Public Library around the 1960s, I believe. But I don't know if it was really this. It could be, um, it could have been I saw something different. And that this just came to my mind and I thought it was what I saw. I don't know. It could be a hoax, uh, but it's not a simple hoax at all. No, it's not a paste on hoax. For example, uh, and let's go to the chat first. Be sure nobody's, well, we do have somebody here. Thank you for coming, Zen Quagga. I think this is your first time here, right? I'm grateful you're here. Thank you for coming. Uh, we, we, I hope you can join us again in, in, in future uh, Friday afternoon, evening uh, live stream chats. But let's get right back to this photo here. What is involved? Well, get closer. The photo appears to be a, wow, it's like a pteranodon-like head. Uh, if you notice there's something like teeth in it, those are, that's not teeth. It looks like it's a pseudo-teeth. Some animals have pseudo-teeth that look like teeth, but they're not actually teeth. Could have been this particular, uh, it was a, if this is real, a real animal. It could have pseudo-teeth, but generally the teeth in pterosaurs are in, in, in general in ramparinkoids, not pterodactyloids. Anyway get to a little more details. These soldiers, uh, some rumors that have been going on, quite a bit. So, oh, this is um, 1864 in Vicksburg, Mississippi. I used to live in Vicksburg, as a matter of fact, uh, in the 1970s. I was a missionary there for a short time. And anyway, I didn't ever see this thing in there. It, it, it was not there when I was there. It was about a century earlier. But my, my associate and I, Clifford Piva, who was a physicist in California, we're both scientists. Uh, he came up with this idea, or somebody that you're talking with, that this is probably not Civil War era. The, the uniforms and the certain things about the soldiers, if not exactly something that suggested that it was a photo taken during the Civil War, but we believe that it could have been a photograph taken. Uh, shortly after the Civil War ended, and it had nothing to do with the uniforms and so on. But it is, uh, these are actual men that are standing there around whatever this is. If it's a fake uh, image of a pterodactyl or a genuine pterodactyl, it's one or the other. It's not pasting on different things together to make, a, to, to make it appear like it is. It's, it's almost almost definitely not that. We, we've done studies on that. It's just not. Uh, for example, I'll give you one thing. My uh, Clifford Pliva did a lot on this, and I highly recommend his work in this area. <laughs> Extremely detailed. He actually found uh, a good evidence for possibility. There's actually blood that had recently flowed or had sometime in the past flowed out of the head or neck or some part of the body near the head. It actually flowed and he sees evidence for that and other things. We'll get to that. But what I did was I looked at the belt buckles and I thought, well, this all of them seem to be the same type of buckle. Let's get into this. And I divided the soldiers into the five background soldiers and the one foreground soldiers. And I magnified the image and I counted the pixels for the width of these uh, belt buckles. And I found that it's a slight difference, but it's a very definite difference. The, the soldiers in the background are actually standing a little bit further away from the, the camera than the soldier in the foreground. That's, in other words, this is evidence that these soldiers were actually standing in the way that we see them. They were not, these are not images of soldiers that somebody cut out in, in a Photoshop and then put them together in a certain way. It's highly unlikely that somebody would, somebody would have thought to put them in a very precise way 
that their distance from the camera would be so precisely like they should be. Nobody that watches a TV show like Freaky, Freaky Links or anything else could, would possibly uh, grab the image and analyze it to see if it's real. This is a television show. I mean, who's going to capture the image off their TV television or whatever and then analyze it to see if the if these are really a, if there's really a hoax involved, or, no, they they wouldn't go to that kind of detail. These are there's actually a photograph of soldiers standing where they are. Now, there's other things involved too. Uh, this is, for example, it looks like it could be. And we don't know for sure. I suppose we can't prove it, but it looks like it could be a small branch placed underneath the beak. And we should mention something that was brought up by Clifford Piva on this in his research. <coughs> in the 19th century, or at least part of the 19th century, possibly at the time that this photo was taken, there was a practice among professional photographers at that time that to, to stabilize certain things so they don't move during the photograph, because it takes quite a few seconds for a photograph to be recorded. Uh, at, at, at around the middle of, around the middle of the uh, 1800s it took time you, you had to keep things steady because if something moved that'd be a horrible uh, blur of that image when the recording was developed so let's we have to quickly get back to the chat here uh, uh, great to be here misery said interesting I think it's the first time for you too isn't it misery thank you so much for coming we're going to have some old timers coming so grateful that you're you're new you got here newly Okay, now this appears to be that kind of prop. Uh, 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 Clifford Piva, the physicist, uh, he says he looks like that kind of prop that would keep the beak from moving. Now, notice the, well, I'll have to mention some other things. Notice the boot of this soldier on there. If this is a real ter pterosaur or a real imitation of one, a really well done um well, let's just say, let's go back to the stick, okay? This stick or, or something under here was to prop it so it doesn't move. That would not be needed if this was a modern hoax. Why would you bother to do that? Almost nobody would notice it except if somebody like my, the physicist or Clifford Pive or myself was doing analysis of this. This is for a TV show, a hoax. Why would this be there? I mean, uh, you don't need to be that careful with the modern 20th, late 20th century, early 21st century photography. You don't have to worry about something moving during the photograph. The photographs are just boom, and it's not going to be blurry for a little bit of movement or time. But it would be in the 1800s, this would be needed, and that's what we find here. Also, the boot appears to be rested slightly, not with not putting weight in it apparently but just slightly so that you see the shadow under the boot one of the critics said there's no shadow under the boot therefore it's fake well absolutely false it's exactly the opposite of what that skeptic said you do see the shadow of the boot underneath the boot on the beak I mean it's there um, and also here I noticed this myself as I was analyzing this a few years ago this is a uh, the green circle, a green oval uh, ellipse. The ellipse uh, that that structure is a very small sapling that was broken down and squished, perhaps by somebody standing on it and, and and forcing it downward. There is an explanation for that. Uh, if this is a real object that was like a real, let's say it was a real pteranodon, like some kind of pterodactyl, gigantic pterodactyl that was actually shot by the soldiers. Um, and they, what would they do if they wanted to have it photographed? The photographer says, I'm not going to go in the bushes. I can't photo photograph anything in the dark of the bushes. Bring it out here. Drag it out where there's sunshine, where we can get a photograph. So the soldiers would drag it. Well, that sapling, notice it's, if it was not stepped on, broken down, it would have been such a length that it could have interfered with the dragging. So somebody just stepped on it and broke it down. A hoax, a hoax production would not think of anything like that at all. They would just build the structure, build the fake pterodactyl, uh, pterodactyl right out there. And they'd build it there, or move it there. They wouldn't bother to do that. And also, you can see that where the beak is, from that beak toward the green circle, 
there's a line. You can't see it too well in this photo. Sorry, I don't have it better one here, but there's a line that I suspect was the dragging of the creature caused the the beak to scrape the ground in that line. And it kind of it doesn't line up exactly from here, but they might have moved it again, the beak perhaps to get the foot on or something like that. But it's generally that general direction. It looks like the beak scraped the ground as it was dragging. Now I could be mistaken. It might not be that, but it certainly fits the theory that this is a real uh, living creature that was killed and then dragged into the clearing in the 1800s to be photographed with the old techniques of photography they had at that time. Okay, and that, well, there's much more than this. We're not going to do it all tonight. It's just too much. I have a whole book on this, you know, a whole book I've written on this. Unfortunately, it's not in print now, but I can go into that. Starseed Lightworker. Hi, thank you for joining us. I think this is your first time too, isn't it? Starseed Lightworker. I love the name. Um, do we have a colorized version with our actual technology? I hadn't thought about that. Um, yeah, hmm, interesting. I don't, I don't think so we have it. I wonder if anyone kept the skull of it. Yeah, that's a good question too. <coughs> I should say, uh, before we go on, that um, there are some things about this. I'm, I'm not going into it in depth because I don't want to spend all the time just on this. There are some things about the PTP photograph, one particular thing, that suggests it might actually have been uh, from a creation of the Freaky Links TV show, and it, and it might, might have got the image of the wing, or one wing, from another show... I don't remember the name of it. Um, it's a. Uh, mm, is it? Don't have it. A name here now. I'm sorry, but it's a. I think it's called Walking with Dinosaurs, where it looks like it's the same image of the wing that was used on. Uh, it uh, that is still image or uh, uh, animation, of a of a giant pterodactyl or just died, that doesn't necessarily prove that somebody took that image from that uh, Walking with Dinosaurs TV episode and then they put that image into the Freaky Links uh, image that they were doing here. It doesn't prove that. It could be the other way around or something like that, that actually the, the, the uh, Walking with Dinosaurs may have actually the animators. I was in professional animation, so I'm not speaking totally ignorantly. I had a video production company in uh, California years ago, and some of the work, a little bit of the things I did were 2D and 3D animation, mostly not that, but and image manipulation. So I, I, I don't know something about this and how things work. Um, it's possible that the, and I'm just speculating, of course, I didn't tried telephoning people all over the world to find out if they can remember what happened. But that when that uh, Walk with Dinosaurs episode was created, they could have just, to get things done quickly, they could have just take a, a wing from a photograph of a pteranodon and, and put it into their uh, into their image there. It would have been very simple to do. It would save them some work. They wouldn't have to figure out what a pterodactyl the way the wing looked like. They just take it from an old image that they found somewhere. I don't even remember what year that was, uh, Walking with Dinosaurs. Uh, could have been after, anyway. Whatever. I'm just saying I don't have knowledge that absolutely proves that this image called PTP is a hoax. It's more like, but I see lots of evidence that it's not a simple hoax at all. Get back to the chat. Who else is here? Uh, yeah, JLBA, is this the first time for you? <laughs> Thank you for coming, JLB. Great. I don't see any new timers, but just new people here. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, delighted <laughs> you've, you've joined us here because we do this every um, uh, Friday uh, about, from about 4.30, 4.45 in the afternoon um, Utah time, which is a mountain time in the United States. <coughs> Let's get back to this photo, which has definitely many evidences that it's not a simple, it's nothing like a simple Photoshop paste on hoax. Uh, definitely not. It's, there's a lot of stuff in here. The, um, look at the head. 
from the research that was done by the physicist Clifford Pive in California, my associate who worked with me on this a few years ago, from things look at the head, and I think it was mainly the eye, maybe it'd be something else, but look at the eye. There is a possibility that if this is not a hoax, if this is a genuine animal, it was dragged from the bushes out into this clearing to be photographed in the 1800s before it had completely died. It was not totally dead at the time. When they took the photograph, it was almost dead, but not quite. That's gross. I know. <laughs> I don't like to think of it, but it's, it has to do with the eye. It just indicates that it may still be alive at this time. But, but anyway, my, if you look down at the neck, and I can't see it myself, but Piva did detailed analysis, the image processing to, to, to learn all he could about it. An actual original image has a slight amount of color recording that was that was done, even though officially you would call it no, no color fo fo photography then. He says you can get some color information from certain things. He said that there's indications of some blood flow down, I don't remember if it was the neck or near the neck, or you know, that general area of the apparent pterodactyl. So there's some, some indication of blood flow. These are kind of details that just seem so way too much for a, just a, a TV show that, to make a hoax of this. It's just, it's just way too much. Why would they go to all that trouble to, when you can't really see it? unless you're a physicist and you do an analysis with, with scientific knowledge of the of how to look for things like that. I certainly can't see blood flow here, but the physicist said he's, he's an indication of that possibility. And um, that one of the early uh, responses to this was, oh, there's a halo on top of this soldier's head. That proves it's a patent, paste and cut. You know, somebody did a Photoshop and pasted it on there and there was an artifact lesson. No, I've been a profession of uh, video. I mean, I know images and image processing. I know cutouts. I understand I've done that sort of thing. This is simply the background. You see where the arrow's pointing? It's just the background of vegetation, underbrush, uh, uh, tree branches, combination thereof, whatever. It's, it's the background. You can look around the side of the head and you can see that there's something else at the line. It's a light colored line. That's definitely a branch and it's not doesn't seem to be much different to me than what's on top of his head. It's just that particular soldier seemed to have something that looked like a little bit like a halo, but it wasn't. The person that made that critical remark is actually, if I understand, he's not an expert in this kind of thing. He's just an amateur cryptozoologist who often likes to to to, to to be saying skeptical things, but he's totally wrong on that. Okay. Um, the other thing is, and let me get to the chat first to see if we got anybody new coming on here. Um, TJ Best, and if this is your first time here, thank you for coming, TJ Best. Looks like a high probably is a real photo and creature. There are definitely indications of that. Though I haven't been able to get the old photo in an old book or old magazine, so I had to stop printing on my book. <laughs> so unfortunately, you can't get this book now because I stopped printing. I just didn't want to be involved with that. I wanted to get back to eyewitness testimonies, interviewing people that have had sightings themselves. And that's really my specialty. But I am a scientist, and I was able to do research on this. And M says, hi, do you get a chance to check out the Thai China uh, footage yet. Uh, I made a remark on that. I made a response on that on the other video. And I, I'll, I'll get on to that. I'll look into that. Okay, getting back to this. Um, this is folded wings. And Clifford Piva, actually his wife, pointed this out. This is a folding. It's, it's not just a simple folding. It actually, according... To, to Piva, who said he talked with his wife, who noticed this. What's happened here is the creature, if it, was, if it was dead or just about to die when the photograph was taken, the wings curled up a certain way and uh, and it bent over. So that when you see that light colored, whatever it is, and appear, what appears to be on the top of the wing, actually that structure was on the bottom of the wing if the creature was flying, but when it 
injured shot whatever and it was on the ground and the wings twisted up now there's something else i need to, yeah this is something you wouldn't expect from just a television show putting together a, a fake monster to to look like it's real you know real pterodactyl that the, and make the soldiers look like they're real dress them up just right you know and have them stand there and, and, and around it and with the rifles and make it look real even though it's just a fake um whatever however they did it it was it was faked and made to look like a pteranodon um why would they go to all that trouble to make it appear like the animal that was just like it was just recently died and it, uh, and it was the wings were kind of twisted around in that way rather than making something like it was simpler rather than making it complex with the wing twisting over like that that's something that could happen with a real animal this this dead or about to die no, that's that could happen, uh, but there's something else too. I have to tell you what's involved with this. I've been investigating, uh, citing reports of apparent modern pterosaurs uh, the past 17 and a half years, and over that period of time, I've received hundreds of reports from around the world, from the eyewitnesses themselves, from five continents, from eyewitnesses themselves, and. On occasion, perhaps in the neighborhood of 1% of the time, on occasion, someone will mention, and it might be a little less than 1%, but occasion someone will mention that, the, that when they saw the flying, there was an indication of not just a simple wing flap, but there was actually a, like a hinge in the middle of the wing of the flying creature, the parent pterodactyl, flying dinosaur, whatever you call it. There was a hinge so that it, it, when it would flap its wings, you could see that motion of the hinge structure that would be a perfect, uh, perfectly in line with what we see here in this photograph. There's definitely a hinge there in the middle of the wing, exactly like those few. But how would a TV program know to hoax something like that when they would have to be researching for hundreds and hundreds of hours, researching what I've discovered and it, a year before I discovered it, you know? <laughs> My discoveries were years after this Freaky Links show. They would have no no way of knowing uh, about uh, you know that years later I, uh, people would be reporting certain occasions or certain indications of a, of a structure in the middle of the wing that would be like a hinge or a semi hinge perhaps. So this is definitely uh, evidence that this was a real pterosaur. I'm not saying it was for sure. I'm just saying that there are evidences both ways. And I think that most of the evidence is in favor of it being a genuine animal that had recently died. And as I said a little earlier, the eyes and maybe something else, but that's the only thing I recall offhand. I haven't studied this for a few years. The eyes indicate the possibility, or this one eye is actually, you can only see just one eye, possibility that the animal was still alive when it was dragged into the clearing for the photograph to be taken sometime in the 1800s perhaps a little bit after the end of the civil war when there was a reconstruction period and soldiers had a little bit better um, uniforms and were a little bit better fed a little bit the things are a little bit different than you would expect from a, a union soldiers during the, the american civil war so that's just a possibility <coughs> so Let's get back to the chat, see uh, how we're doing with the, um, we have a good participation, good, already quite a few people here. Um, let's see, yeah, nothing, nothing recent here, okay. We can go back over some of these things too, see if I can remember some of the things that are invo involved, there's a lot involved and it's been a few years. Hello, no, hello. Oh, there is one soldier. Let's get back, back, back to this a little bit. One soldier, if I'm not mistaken, it's the one on the our far left, from our perspective, on the left side. Uh, one skeptic said, "Oh, it's a fake. Look at that. His hand, his fingers are cut off of his hand. You know, that's insinuating that there's a paste and and cut, cut and paste kind of hoax with like something like Photoshop." 
No, not at all. That was totally wrong. The person that threw out that statement probably is, doesn't know the real details of the process. I have. I've been a professional videographer and, and video editing professionally, and I've done things like that. It's not. Let's see if we can get a little bit closer on this uh, to that particular soldier. Mm, yeah, not too much closer. Anyway, it's background soldier number one, BS1. It is true. Uh, you can't see his fingers on his hand that's holding his rifle. Now, let me explain this, what actually is going on. And don't jump to the conclusion, oh, it's a paste-on hoax, of course. And that's why you can't think of his fingers, because when somebody pasted on the gun, well, there. You see, they didn't look into that. No, <laughs> that's the point. The only way that the fingers could be missing from a paste-on hoax, like Photoshop processing, the only way that can happen is if you had a soldier holding out his arm as if he were holding a rifle, but he wasn't holding a rifle when... That's crazy because, yeah, it is crazy. And then somebody takes a photograph and then a uh, hundred years later or, or more, somebody I think, uh, gets a, a paste on, a, a cut out of a rifle and pastes it on there. So finally that soldier has a rifle after a hundred years of, of standing there, you know, waiting for some somebody in the future to give him a rifle for the photograph. It's all nonsense, you know. What's really happening is, if you look close, and I'm sorry I don't have a, a, a close shot of that particular soldier, but if you look close, you can't see the ramrod. The ramrod is, is, is something that's used, of course, to ram this, everything into the rifle and before you shoot it. But, and, and I'm not actually positive this is technically it's a rifle, but whatever kind of gun it is, anyway. Um, it, you can't see it wide because it's it's most likely on the other side from the, the camera, so you can't see the ramrod connected to the rifle barrel. What's more natural than if a soldier was posing there and he's holding his holding his uh, rifle to just put his fingers around the ramrod? What's unusual about that? So you wouldn't see his fingers well, from the camera's perspective. Of course, it's, it's just nonsense with some of the skeptical remarks that came out at the beginning of this. Um, <coughs> get back to the chat, see who's joined us. Thunderbird photo is my cap favorite topic, yeah. Thanks for joining us, KJ. So grateful you can be here too. Um, see if there's something else come to mind while we're on this subject and we have these photographs. I've been studying this for so many hours and days and weeks and months and, and wrote this book on it. Not in print anymore, but the way things go, I really want Providence. I want somebody to contact me if they know an old book, like at least back in the middle of the 20th century that has this photo in it or, or a magazine. Nobody's contacted me with that yet. And that's why I, I don't want to put the book back into print. It's still going to be held from public until I can get provenance, meaning evidence for where it came from. All right, one of the skeptics says, oh, look at all that light colored stuff in the trees there. It's so light, it doesn't make sense. Well, look at some old photographs from the Civil War or that particular time in American history or any other worldwide history. Sometimes the sun will be shining on some trees and it will make a white a whiteout effect. That's just the way it is. Some people will say, well, how can these soldiers all be in such good focus? You know, that's what photography does in the middle of the 1800s and 19th century. That's what the photographer does. He has the, the way he focuses on the people that are lined up in front of the camera. He doesn't worry about the background. He focuses so that you have Civil War images I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of so many Civil War photographs where the soldiers that are photographed are in clear, clear focus. That's the nature of photography at that time in history. And uh, somebody else said, oh, look at that. That's not that's fake. Look at this, the dark shirt of the soldier. You know, it wouldn't shouldn't appear that dark. Well, the actual reality is. If the shirt is dark, then it will appear dark. That's 
the reality. There's nothing weird about it. And if you look way back in the background, in some of the crevices in the vegetation, you'll you'll see that <coughs> some of that is rather dark, not perhaps quite as dark as the uniforms shirts, but you know, uniforms can be darker than tree branches. That's just the reality of the way the world is. This particular uniforms apparently were dark shirts. Um, what else came up at that time? Oh yeah, one one famous cryptozoologist. I'm not mentioning names. One famous cryptozoologist says, "Oh look, you should look at it, and it's obviously Photoshop hoax." Well. I don't think that person, that cryptozoologist, is an expert in photograph or an expert in hoaxes. It just, it just flew off the top of his, of his head and just he said it. No evidence, no research, anything. I, I think Clifford Piva and I, uh, a few years ago, probably put more research into this photograph than perhaps everybody else in the world combined, as far as I know. We've we spent a lot of time on this. I'm speculating, I know. I don't, I don't really know what everybody else has been doing, but we spent a lot of time over a period of many months looking into this, researching it, all different angles of it. It's still controversial, and I, I, I still can't really say for sh close to certainty that it is a genuine photograph of an actual modern pterosaur, but there's other things that we can get into too. Let's go back to the chat. Okay, uh, I missed some things here, sorry. <coughs> um, okay, yeah. KJ says, what was that book called? Oh, Modern Pterosaurs. I'm sorry, it's out of, I stopped the printing of it. A star speed light whatever we should make an association put money into it then travel and make baits and try to get footage well actually that's a good point i'm actually in the process of forming a non-profit organization to do that i'm actually doing that myself i just choose a board of directors and i have to do a lot of things and then paperwork but we will get started. We're in the early stages of forming that nonprofit organization. To then, one of the things we will be doing is getting people out in the field, expeditions, and so on. Um, research foundation. Yeah, we will. We are getting into the early stages. The eye socket looks more realistic than I believe a hoaxer would make. Yeah, based on modern movies, unless this prop has been used a lot which it hasn't. That's a good point, TJ. Good points there. You get that? Wow. And Mac uh, got some... Oh, this is Mac. Thank you for coming back, Mac. You, here's an old-timer. Isn't, isn't that photo fake? Well, probably it's not fake. It's possible. I can't say anything close to certain one way or the other, but I see a tremendous amount of evidence that it's not a Photoshop hoax. A tremendous amount of evidence for that. I've done research for many months on that. It's not a Photoshop hoax. A star speed light where it looks like it have a 30 foot wingspan. It is, I forgot what Piva, the, the um, missile defense physicist, uh, he got something on that. I can't remember what it was, but I think it was in that general neighborhood of 30 feet, if I remember what he did his research on. Uh, and um, so let's get back to this. The YouTube video is debunking that photo. Well, <laughs> there's a lot of junk from a few years ago that, that actually is a lot of mistakes. Not everything is, is wrong in the debunking. I'm not saying that. It's just that some of the things are just ridiculous and, and nonsensical. The um, <coughs> I'm not done with proper research, I think. I can't say for sure. It's possible that the Freaky Links might have put this together. It's just a lot of incredible things that put together look like it's, it's definitely not a simple hoax. Um, here, let's get back to the photo. And it's possible that there is some manipulation here some, some to make it look old. I'm not, I'm not denying that. It's possible some of the stuff that makes it, that makes it look old is actually inserted onto the photograph. That's possible. That doesn't necessarily mean the origin is is with a, a fake um, 
animal and it's not from uh, uh, from the image manipulation hoax. And I mentioned earlier, for those of the users who were coming here, that I did research, I did very close examination of the belt buckles and uh, found that these are apparently actual real persons, apparent soldiers, whether or not they are soldiers, they're real persons who have, who were at some time or other, standing close to either a real giant pterodactyl or a fake uh, construction that looked like one. They're real persons. They were not pasted on from other images. Uh, the belt buckles were I measured very carefully in the pixels and they the, the soldiers, the five background soldiers, BS1 to BS5, were actually standing a little a little bit further away from the camera than the foreground soldier, FS soldier just a little bit and that uh, not likely a hoax with photoshop would <laughs> would get that at all it's just almost unbelievable so these are real soldiers and they're standing around a real object not a photoshop hoax uh whether this real or not it's, it's got some weird if it's fake it's really some strange things <laughs> it's almost as incredible as if it was a real dirt actaloid that was that was shot in the 1800s and photographed. It's so incredible the way that the details of this, the wing shape, the the twisting of the wing a certain way, a certain in the middle of the wings, you know, it's just uh, strange. But then again, I can't take a firm stand to say absolutely it is a modern pterosaur. But we need to get on, unless there's some more questions particularly about this. Oh, Lauren Coleman. Though that's since the name came up, uh, I'll mention that from years ago, quite a few years ago. I don't know if there's anything recently, but this quite a few years ago, Lauren Coleman came out and basically he 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 on his blog, which he no longer controls. Somebody else took control of that blog, as I understand. On his blog, he he gave this image. He put out this image and said, "This obviously, I think, if I remember right, I can't quote him. I just off." The up in my head from years ago he said it's an obvious photoshop hoax or something in that nature and that's absolutely wrong and he i don't think he's a photoshop expert and he doesn't i don't think he does uh, that kind of work i have uh, i know he claims to own the creature prop from the photo but it's not that one i don't think it's something else it could be the one similar to that and I don't think I have that here. Sorry, I've been so busy trying to prepare this. There's another photo that looks so much like it looks somewhat like it has soldiers around. And there is it is that prop, I think, is the one that he has, as I understand. It's a very poor production, uh, TV production monster kind of thing made out of canvas or something. I think that might be what's referred to there with the creature prop that... Uh, Lauren Coleman owns, or it could be something else, a third one entirely. What state is that in? Okay, Nathan Longfrey, thank you for coming here. You're, you're an old timer here. You've been here before. Um, what state was it? And I can tell you the rumor. I can tell you that, that it was taken, I think uh, the rumor is 1864 uh, in the area of Vicksburg, Mississippi. I used to live there myself. I was a missionary there many years ago. But Vicksburg, Mississippi, uh, is the rumor, but if you don't have any definite proven, province, uh, provenance of that source for that, you know, who knows what the truth is. The pterosaur looks flat in the other photo. Well, the, the other photo, sorry I don't have it here, guys. I was working so hard to prepare this to get the photos ready, and I missed that one. I'm pretty sure I missed that one. But the other one... It's obviously fake, and I don't know hardly anybody believes in that one. It was it was made apparently for uh, the freaky links, and uh, and I think one of those uh, some debunkers are far worse than what they think they're debunking. Can't trust many fact checkers, unfortunately. Yeah, that's true. People will see them. Anything that comes to mind, they'll throw that out as if it's you know scientific. If it's a prop, it's well, it's so well done. And yeah, it's not, it's not uh, 
a canoe that was cut in half. I, I have a canoe expert, and I'm sorry I didn't. I had a, his photograph. I didn't have a chance to get it on here, so you can see the photograph of this expert who actually constructs canoes. And he pointed out it's just not a canoe. And if you look closely at it, you can actually. I think you'll agree with me. Um, if this was a canoe, it would be too small for an adult to fit into it. Have, the only person that could use the canoe would be a, a small child. Why would anybody construct such a long canoe for a small child and then decide, oh, I'll cut it in half and make it into a parent, a ter pterodactyloid? No, it's just not a, a canoe. <coughs> now, um, okay, Jay, I do appreciate your in-depth analysis of this better for Well, thank you. I think it's important. Yeah. Um, be aware uh, it's possible for a person to see something and come up with a uh, an idea that might be correct but if you don't do research and look into it it often just falls apart and actually is just a total mistake <clears throat> and I guess for example if this was a real event in the 1800s let's say 1869 for example just off the top of my head somewhere in the south uh, there's a gigantic uh, modern uh, pterosaur that was shot by some uh, uh, northern, well, American soldiers back then. They wouldn't call them Union soldiers then after the war was over. Some uh, uh, soldiers from the north came down to keep order, whatever they call it, reconstruction. Um, and if they did, whether they shot it or not, or just shot it after it landed or, or shot it down, it would most likely fall in the bushes and under brush and, and probably if and I'm just speculating if this happened for example let's just go this way the um they, they found the they saw well there's a photographer nearby so they got the photographer and they dragged him he says I'm I can't photo photograph something this is a this is about the middle of the 1800s I can't photograph something in the bushes do you want me to photograph that thing drag it out into this clearing here i'll see if i can photograph it for you and so all the soldiers are oh, great and then they found this young sapling which is just big enough and in the way so somebody just stepped on it and broke it down you see that green uh indication there inside that green green line is uh a small sapling that looked like it was broken down and stepped on why was that done unless it was to drag the creature there and look at the mark there's a line you can't see it goodness there's a line that goes approximately from the beak out toward the uh, lower right part of the photograph from our perspective. I suspect when they were dragging the creature out of the bushes into the clearing for the photograph that the beak was dragging her against the ground and made that line in the, in the dirt. I think that's what happened. It's, I can't prove it. It's, you know, it could be mistaken, but it is a possibility. It could have happened. Um, his leg stepped on the beak looks photoshopped. Well, look closely at it, uh, Matt. Look closely. I have it um, look a little bit closer still. Closer still. Why does it look photoshopped? What is there about it that looks photoshopped? I've, I've done that kind of video manipulation, you know, image manipulation. I've done it before. What probably you're 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 getting the impression perhaps I'm guessing is that the angle of the boot is not is not something strange about it. It's not flat against the beak itself. That is true, and that does look kind of weird. But think about it from the perspective that if this is a real animal that was being photographed with soldiers, you'd have see the arrow pointing to that white thing underneath it is a, a prop. It was the kind of prop that was used in the 1800s to keep something still during the photography process. So during the recording, nothing moves because if there's a slight movement, then it messes up that part of the photograph and it's all blurry. The it takes quite a few seconds for the photograph to take place. So you have to have props like that, pieces of wood, blocks and things. And you put it under the beak and the soldier was told, don't put your weight on it because you know what happened if the soldier put his weight on the beak, it would move. It, or else his, his boot would move, his shoe would move. 
and that would mess up the photograph. So he just lightly put the edge of his boot on the beak, and you can see the shadow under the boot, the shadow of the boot. Where is the Photoshop evidence there? I don't know. I don't see it. I've worked with image processing before. Um, Okay, starseed may be due to long exposition. Oh, yeah, I think you mean long exposure. Yeah, very long exposure well, compared to what we have now. Whoa, I think many seconds for a, a recording to take place. Now, a little later in the 1800s, they did improve it a great deal, and it was much fewer, much faster exposures later in the 1800s, but in the time period of about late 1860s that time maybe the early 1870s they were still having that problem everything had to be kept very still for the exposure for many seconds <coughs> that kind of gives us a time frame if this is a real photograph in the 1800s and it would be a real animal it wouldn't be something that the people that back there could could have constructed <laughs> if they if they wanted to they have too much to do anyway but did you pull the book out of print because you wanted to upgrade it? No, because it's just I really felt a need for provenant, provenance where it came from. I need somebody to, to, to give me evidence of a particular old book or old magazine where I can feel more comfortable. There's too much controversy with this freaky links ideas people are throwing out. And that was decades ago, the turn of the century, decades, a few decades ago, a couple of decades ago. It was too much controversy in there and they said I want somebody to tell me where they saw it exactly what book was it what magazine was it not just you have a vague memory of it you got to have something more than that the closer you look the more realistic it is in my opinion that's what I found and also Clifford Piva the, the, the scientist in California yeah well, that's what we found <laughs> so we keep looking into it and looking at more things we discover new things yeah, TJ, if it's fake prop, the guy that made it would have to be a master of proportion in cryptozoology. Oh, wow. I mentioned this a little earlier, <clears throat> that, the, that the wings have, um, in this parent pterodactyl, if it's real or not, the wings are definitely hinged in the middle in a weird way that causes the wings, to, the, the outside part of the wings to flip over. That's incredible fret, uh, hinge structure. And why would any uh, TV production company make something like that? And, and that was many, many years before my uh, investigations in which I found that there's a small percentage of eyewitnesses worldwide who testify to tell me that the flying of these pterodactyls in modern times involves a wing that's not just flat or straight like this, but it actually has a hinge-like structure in the middle of the wing. Well, look at the PTP photograph, as we call it. Boy, that is a hinge. Absolutely. No doubt about that. And even at the time, a few years ago, when I printed the book and when I did research on this, I wasn't even thinking about that time. I just came up with it today as I was putting this together, and I thought, whoa. There's another evidence it's it's a it's a real pterosaur there. But still I'm not close to certain enough that I really feel comfortable saying absolutely it has to be real. As I, I do sometimes make mistakes. It's just I'm human. Like thirty seconds in the Civil War era. I don't remember exactly how many seconds it is, KJ. I, I don't recall. It might not be thirty seconds, but it's a lot of seconds. It's a lot. It might depend on particular exposures, I suppose. Do you think there are multiple Thunderbird photos? Many people remember it showing a large bird. There's a lot of photos. We need to look at this a little bit. Uh, uh, the wings, the wings, the neck. Yeah, yeah, it is an incredible uh, image here. Let's go over a little bit. And we did look at the beginning here. And this is a possibility of a of a genuine photograph. I can't say, I don't know the provenance on this either. Where'd it come from? <coughs> I think, I believe, and this is before I was born, but I believe 
but this is a, a little uh, boy, uh, something like a Boy Scout, maybe a different group, but the hat is similar to what they would be wearing about the early 20th century. It's, it's not what some people say. It's a, not a not a small cowboy. No, no, it's a, it's a it's a it's a young boy, and this looks like it could be a roping, possibly with a tail flange at the end of a skinny tail. It's possible. I don't know of anybody that's giving any details about uh, about that, but we can move on a little bit here, unless we have more things from the chat that we need to. Uh, pay attention to <coughs> Megan. There are a photo of Loch Ness monster, and people believed it until the guy came out and said it was a toy. I've heard things about that, but that's not really much relevant here, except that people sometimes make mistakes in different ways. And I've never seen that photo debunked. Um, KJ, but I don't know which photo you mean. The PTP photo I've been showing you. Well, anyway, this one is a vulture. Oh, well, it's interesting, except why, if it's a vulture, why did they uh, uh, somebody uh, make a hoax showing a long tail with a ramphorinquoid-like flange at the end? And why would it have wings like that? It doesn't look like vulture wings to me. A little bit, some of the some of it looks it reminds me a little of vulture but did somebody put different things together to make it look like a pterodactyl was possible it could have been <coughs> here's the folded wings these are very clearly uh, seen in this image and the if it's fake it was faked many years before my uh, research in recent years which indicates uh, that the modern pterodactyls uh, sometimes have a a hinge-like structure in the middle of the wing, which when they're flying is evidence. We got more chat. Um, originally a photo of a vulture and edited look like a rope, and well, that's very possible, KJ. It could have been somebody manipulated, but this is a fairly old photo, and I don't think that people knew about the word roping, but, so if that's another problem with that idea, is why would they... You know, why would they uh, come up with that uh, idea like that with the long tail and the flange at the end when it wasn't well known before my associates and I did our expeditions in Papua New Guinea and started writing in books and blog posts and so on on that uh, 17 and a half years ago or 17 years ago. I think, yes, because the head and neck is so vulture. Well, it's, yeah, it's, it's interesting, but we can go to something else here with uh, Brian Harley. Let's just see how many people we have here. Is it getting, uh, it's getting pretty active. This is more active than usual. Got a lot of people here, new timers and some old timers. Brian Harley is on, he put out a video of his video. And this is in uh, Pontiac, Michigan, July 15th, 2015 is when he videotaped the sky. It's interesting cloud formations, I believe, I understand. There's just some, some beautiful cloud formations over over his house when he took the video, just because of cl the clouds were, were interesting. And what happened was he got some video of the clouds, and later he discovered something interesting, a flying creature that was really weird. I recommend, he, recommend that you go to his website it's not the website, sorry, the YouTube video, Unknown Flying Creature at 35,000 Feet, Dragon or Thunderbird. And <coughs> he put this out and uh, put the video up on October 15th of the same year, just a few weeks after the actual video was, was recorded of the sky. There's some interesting things here. Um, this is just four of many, many images. Uh, let me see where we are there and all, all of the images I have. Okay. I'll give you an example here. Some of the, now you have to see the video to really get the, get the overall picture of this. Watch his YouTube video. Um, not right now. We want to be together right now. <laughs> but, you know, later. 
the um and you see the drawing behind me of by Eskin Kuhn, the U.S. Marine in 1977, 1971, excuse me, 1971 in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, who drew this sketch, that included this image here. But let's get back to this in the video. It's very poor. He was uh, not knowing there was a creature in the sky when he took it, and he just happened to capture some of it. But this flying creature does not seem to be a bird based upon all the different angles, the way that it would put its wings together and fold them up toward the body at one point, and then the way it would flap its wings at other time. And then the lower, from our perspective, the lower left image here, I see something that might be a long skinny tail. In other words, it might be a roping. I don't know. But what I can say about this, and I did and I did look into this just in the last few days, this um, Brian Harley is very likely telling the truth and this is not a hoax. I saying I, I'm at least 80% sure that there's no hoax involved here, that he actually videotaped that's at least 80%. I'm not trying to say anything negative. I just can't be absolutely sure based on just objective scientific evaluation of the of things. At least 80% sure this is a real flying creature he videotaped in the sky. And there's a number of reasons for that. Two different types of evidence. I'm not going to go into the details because of, then I might find in the future some hoaxer would take advantage of it. I don't want make it easy for a hoaxer in the future, but it's not likely to be a hoax. He videotaped a real flying creature that does not appear to me, and I'm not anything remotely like the world's best expert in birds or bird flight, but I probably have a little bit more knowledge and um, experience and understanding of birds and bird flight than the average, average person, you know. And it does not resemble uh, what I've seen in, in videos and documentaries of bird flight or in my observation of birds outside in the wild and watching them fly. It doesn't look like them. It looks with different, different, different way it, it moves and, and acts and behaves during its flying through the clouds here. I'll take it for what it's worth. Um, the ropen has a long tail for those that might not know, and this is just a comedy kind of a video on the top left here. Um, but the ropens have long tails. They're modern flying creatures without feathers. And some people do see a hair on, on them if they're close enough and they notice that they will report to me that they see hair on the creature. But um, my associates and I in general we believe that the, the, the ropens, are, which are found around the world in many different parts of the world, are either rare or uncommon and mostly nocturnal most of the time. And that's why they're not discovered yet. And also because of other factors involving it's just so revolutionary. They, we believe that they're descended from some species of Ramphorinchoid long-tailed pterosaur, even though they're so much bigger than the, the, the fossils that are generally found of these, this type of pterosaur. <coughs> but uh, that's what we believe. This is a sketch by uh, Patty Carson. I've interviewed over many years, many times, mostly by telephone and by emails. And a very credible eyewitness I found her to be. Uh, she was in, with her family as a child, she was at Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. In around 1965, she witnessed this. She can't be sure exactly if it was, if it was 1965 or not. But she witnessed this as a child, and it was fairly close by in the middle of the day. A clear view of it. It stood up out of a tall grass, and it, it probably was startled by the, the the school children that were coming by, or the children that were going by, including Patty Carson and her younger brother. And it was startled, and maybe it was sleeping, and it was just acting like it was dazed, like it didn't know what, what was going on. And Patty and her little brother froze. They froze. It was instinctive, you know. Whoa, what is that? Don't move. They froze. And the creature, very soon, it looked around, and then very soon, 
flapped its wings and got out of there because it probably was startled by the noise from the children. <coughs> this is what I call an American hammerhead ropin. I believe it's descended from some species of Ramphorin coiteris or long tail. <coughs> she got a clear view. She didn't draw it in this sketch here, but she got a clear view of the long tail. She said that the flange at the end of the tail was held horizontally. And most scientists believe that the Ramphorinco pterosaurs had their tails uh, arranged differently so that they'd be easier to fly left and right that way. But they don't really have any hard evidence for that. When, it, when a, a, a pterodactyl, what, what's properly called a pterosaur of that type, died and was and the rare ones that were fossilized, and let me get back to this. Uh, the rare the ones that were fossilized, um, they're twisted up in all different ways. You can't really tell from the fossils what way they held the tail flange. And you can't really tell well from here. Um, perhaps you might. Perhaps. Let's look at this. Eskin Kuhn was a U.S. Marine, 1971, Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. He was out on a break. And he wasn't doing any drugs or drinking, anything like that. Perfectly good health. It was a clear day, good visibility when he went out there close to the coast, close to the beach. And these two creatures were flying low level, low, not high up, but low, close range. Flew right past him. He, he gazed at them, concentrated on them because he's a talented artist. He can sketch realistically, concentrated on them. <coughs> and as we look at it now, and I've been thinking about this lately, I think this actually is evidence for what Patty Carson said about uh, this type of, of flying creature she saw at Guantanamo Bay a few years earlier than the U.S. Marine did. But she said definitely that the tail was, the flange was held so that it was um, uh, horizontally, so it would make it easier for the animal to, to well, I think it's called pitch, uh, put the nose up or down, you know, quickly with the, up and down movement of the tail, it would do that, that, that kind of uh, uh, motion. And, uh, you know, looking at Eskin Kun's situation, <coughs> if they're flying low and he was not too close to them, it's not like they're going to brush him with their wings, but he was far enough away that he would see some of the aspect of the tail flange, but not get a pronounced, let me get, where you can see me here. There, there's just like more, it's not totally like this, but definitely not like this, but if it was held like this and he, and it was a little bit, and it was higher than him, he could see a little bit of that flange structure because of where he was standing in relation to the two flying creatures, apparent ropins, modern pterosaurs, ramphorinkoid like. And it makes sense that his sketch would show just a little bit of the indication of that of that uh, flange because they were higher than he was. He was about six feet tall, so his eyes were, I think, were well, well over five feet above the ground, but they were flying higher than that. So he wouldn't see them straight on with the tail. He would see them at such an angle that there would be an indication of a flange at the end of the tail. <coughs> Patty Carson said definitely they were held in the horizontal position, the flange structure. If they were like scientists thought, then you'd, wow, you'd get a very clear uh, sighting of it if it was on the ground just taking off. But apparently it moved its tail a certain way or something, so Patty was able to see that. But she didn't give the details. That could have been when it's taking off, it twisted around in such a way that she was able to see that flange. Okay. Because uh, I think it was somewhat flying away from her. Anyway, it, it flew off. So. Let's see. I've missed a lot of chat things here, probably. Sorry. Okay. Let me get back to the, to the discussions here. Um, okay.
yeah the video it looks like, yeah i don't have the video uh displaying here you have to go to see it and if you saw it great starcy uh j dingle q jingle q dingle sorry found statement of claiming photo comes out of a believe it or not book between 1950s and 1960s caption calls it an unknown bird or monster shot down near vicksburg virginia in 1864 by soldiers <laughs> is there a vicksburg virginia i don't know of a vicksburg virginia no vicksburg mississippi i used to live there why are these photos or videos always blurry well we could get into that if you want to, uh, any particular one they're not all blurry of course the main point of this tonight's video is this one that's not blurry at all but the point is <coughs> not a professional photographer or videographer just probably using an ordinary camera and he was concentrating on the trying to capture the clouds he didn't know there was a, a strange flying creature up there so i don't see anything unusual about that but there are a lot of cases where well, we'll give him an example i don't have it all uh, right here with me but uh, the eyewitness uh cynthia cynthia um lee Cynthia Lee from Raleigh, North Carolina. She did get a vi video. We don't have it here tonight, but she did get a video footage as she she got on the bus, the city bus, as I understand, and she as the bus was taking off one direction, the flying creature, two two of them actually, she thinks there were two of them, two apparent ropes are flying the other way, away from where the bus was going. She she got out her cell phone, pointed it through the window of the bus, and just got very shaky unclear footage i do have one person that says he's analyzed it and got got to process it to see it better, better but okay max says i have a iphone 12 and if i ever see a turret turret it won't come out blurry we'll see keep watching man i can see what happens the situations are not always easy i'm a professional i was used to be a professional videographer event videographer uh, videography and for attorney firms and i can tell you that unless you practice with any phone whatever the with any camera whatever it's a phone camera whatever it is any camera unless you practice it you're unlikely to get a real event recorded quickly if it's just a a, a quick event now you've got the advantage mac you know about these sightings so you can stay calm and Try to keep your head and just get out your phone and, and, and turn it on and, and get it pointed the right way. If it's still in view, if the modern pterosaur is still in view, record and try to keep your hands steady. Uh, I practice that a lot to be a professional camera operator. Try to keep your hands steady like that as, there, as it goes and follow it. Maybe you'll get a good video. That would be great. But it, not, it doesn't happen automatically. Most people see one, they don't even think about getting a camera. They're so shocked. They're trying to figure out what it is they're seeing. They don't even think about getting a camera. It doesn't matter if they have a phone in their pocket or not. So that's the reality of the way people are. That's just the way it is. Let's see. Oh, did we cover things that should have been covered? For those who are new, this is pterodactyl photos, videos, and sketches. I'm Jonathan Whitcomb. Protect Animal Life is a channel here on YouTube. Please come back for other kinds of videos and for these uh, live streams. Contact me here <coughs> any questions. We're going to keep going tonight. We have a lot of things we can talk about. And feel free, feel free to participate and give us your thoughts and feelings. And I'll try to remember things that I've learned over the last uh, 18 years on this subject of these parent motor pterosaurs and do the best I can. Um, and I try to prepare for these, but uh, I'm human. I have other things coming up. And Well, thank you. For, well, you're very welcome, Star Seed. Uh, I, I hope I can keep on finding new things to present to you. Make, you can have your own discoveries. Don't know if this is real or not. It, it, it's weird anyway it's it could be old 
the PTP photograph is very controversial. I'm just not taking a firm stand on it. I'm saying that there's a lot of evidence that there is no simple hoax involved with this. It's not a simple hoax at all. Extremely complex subject here. The, the head, if it's fake, is an extremely good fake. Extremely good. And there's so much research that we did on this over a period of many months. Clifford Pye was a scientist in California. <coughs> and I was working on certain things differently than him. We didn't duplicate our work, but we have different kind of abilities and, and experiences that we draw into our research. And then we found a lot of interesting things on this. Belt buckles, for example. these It shows measuring the width of the belt buckles in detail. I found that these five soldiers <clears throat> who appear to be a little further away from the camera than the FS uh, front soldier, foreground soldier, actually were standing a little bit further back than the one that has his foot on the, the beak of this, whatever it is. They were actually a little bit further away from the camera. Uh, the small, this is discovered by Clifford Pye, the small branches could be a prop. He doesn't know for sure. We can't say for sure. Could be a prop that's commonly used in the 1800s by photographers. And that would allow the beak to be not moving so that they could take that photograph over many seconds of exposure to get the photo. It's not absolute proof by itself, but these things together, a small tree that was apparently broken down and stepped on so that possibly the, all the soldiers could drag this big creature out from the underbrush into the clearing where this photographer could make a decent photograph in the middle of the clearing. And also there's a beak mark here. Apparently the beak was dragged in the ground and made a mark here in the dirt. These things are not likely things that a TV show would would make to make a really good hoax. You know, they would probably not think of all these details. It's too much. And this, of course, there's no halo here. That's a false, false claim. This is just simply the background um, vegetation, leaves, plant life, trees, whatever. Regular vegetation behind there. There's no Photoshop hoax. There's a bend of the wings that we believe, uh, I believe now, may re probably relate to certain eyewitnesses who say that the, the wing flapping of modern pterosaurs has a bend from a hinge in the middle of the wing. Now, we're not saying that all these sightings around the world over decades are all the same species. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I, I found certain things over the last 17 and a half years that indicate certain things that are similar uh, around the world. <coughs> and this is a one thing that I occasionally get is this hinge-like structure in the middle of the wing. And it does relate here to this photograph. So, you know, it's another indication that it could be real. And Brian Harley, this is very interesting thing. This he got, I don't know if it's a pterodactyl, I don't know, modern pterosaur, or rope, I don't know. I'm just saying it looks strange. It doesn't look like any bird that I know of, unless somebody knows of some strange bird that acts in this way and sometimes will fold its wings up uh, to close to the body and sometimes will bend it in certain ways. That, I don't remember ever seeing a bird that behaves like that in flight. Um, this is a big bird, apparently. Anyway, at least uh, I'll, going back and forth between these two different, uh, you have to see the video. Here it is. Unknown flying creature at 35,000 feet. But don't watch it now. Let's get through with this. Get back to the chat. Um, yeah. Q, did I witness one earlier and sent it to your contacts? Have you gotten to read my signing account? Well, I don't know uh, what where would this be, uh, Q Dingo? Are you in Australia by any chance? If your name is Q Dingo, maybe um, is that where the sighting was? Because I uh, I haven't gotten to my emails for a few days. Sorry, but you if you send an email, I don't have it. I don't know um, which contacts uh, you you contacted. I don't know. Just feel free to, if you want to say something here. Feel free to tell us what what you saw. I have an, quite a few sightings in Australia over the years. Uh, the most, one of the most dramatic, perhaps the most dramatic, 
in Australia. It was in Perth, Australia, in the early evening in December of, pretty sure, 1997. Pretty sure, 1997. And that was a husband and wife. The husband was a scientist, actually. Incredible sighting, a gigantic flying creature, like lizard-like. Not a bird-like at all. Wingspan 30 feet to 50 feet. <clears throat> In other words, more 10 feet more or less than 40 feet, you know, give or take 10 feet. It's the estimate. So anybody has a sighting report, they want to just the contact if, if we could give us. Oh, that would be the... Um, yeah, so I, I mean, that was my fault. And I haven't looked at my popularly at my emails lately. I would have gotten an email from that contact uh, page. Sorry, I, I, I've just been so busy <laughs> income tax and and preparing to start a nonprofit organization to fund expeditions to search for modern pterosaurs. And it's a lot going on. And uh, what about? Okay, Pug Mahone, Mahoney, about taking photos, just think about all the Sasquatch fix. They call them blob squatch. Seems very difficult. Well, I, I don't know much about no, Bigfoot Sasquatch. Sasquatch, I don't know much about them. I, I understand the, that point of view, of course. Absolutely, yeah. You know, very few people are professional photographers, especially not professional wildlife photographers, which is different than a professional photographer that would take a photo of you and your family, you know, out somewhere or in a studio or something. That's that's, that's not what I'm referring to. I mean, uh, like wildlife photographers. As far as I know, I was the first uh, explorer in Papua New Guinea uh, to search for modern pterosaurs who was... Uh, had any experience with professional video at all or professional inter interviewing of eyewitnesses for for attorney firms for for court cases and legal matters <coughs> but i just was not able to find it it's just too hard to find the creature i would have gotten it if i had a dash cam yeah that the dash cams are getting more popular i think this is real possibilities here. I'm excited about dash cams as more people get those. Todd Standing has gotten close up videos of Sasquatches. Oh, that's interesting. Thank you, Nathan Longpray, for telling us. Uh, um, some of you probably are interested in, in Sasquatch, too. <coughs> now, my specialty is just on these flying creatures. The soldiers are too thick versus the stature of the men in the late 1800s. To, uh, too thick, I mean, too heavy set. Well, heavy setness is not something that is a permanent thing. I know from my own experience over a matter of years, it can change. A thin person can get not so thin pretty quick. And this is, though, I think there's a good point here about that <coughs> is that <coughs> the PTP photograph. Um, shows men who maybe were a little a little more heavy set than than the soldiers during the Civil War, but that's what we think is probably not during the Civil War, but after the Civil War. It's not the uniforms are a little different too, which indicates it probably was not a photograph taken during the Civil War exactly, but a little after. Okay, and I need to look here at um, people talking. Okay. Um, where are the most promising places to search for ropens? Papua New Guinea? The KJ, uh, I don't recommend that. I mean, we do have an expedition going on there right now, but I generally don't recommend it. It's, it's way too complicated and expensive, and, and they're found all over the world. So wherever you are, there may be a sighting in your neighborhood. They're just rare or, noct or uncommon, and they're generally nocturnal. And they're spread out over large areas of land, or just really spread out. But they're in North America, the United States, Canada, Mexico, Europe, many different areas. Um, they've been doing dining on tasty terrace on the... 
Well, Q Dingo, I believe it was pushed down out of the Rockies from the snowstorm like other animals. No tail or crest, but not a bird. Fast little bugger. Oh, now I remember, Q Dingo. You did report it here uh, not too many weeks ago, right? Starseed Lightweather. Which city in Canada did you get sightings mostly? It was going after a single. Okay, let's get back here to this. Um, I live in California, and I never see them. Well, you would have to look a lot, Mac, to, to see them. They're not common like seagulls or pigeons or crows. It's, it's not easy to, to get a sighting of one. Hugh Dingo, one YouTuber with UFO light video makes me suspect they make crop circles. There's a footprint, too. Oh, I don't know about that. I'm... They specialize in modern pterosaurs. Um, let's see. Let me get everything here. I've written quite a few books over the years. The largest one is Searching for Opens and Finding God, the fourth edition. Uh, this has... Um, a lot of things about uh, ropens and other pterosaurs too, not just ropens. Other modern pterosaurs that are less common than the ropen, but they're also living in modern times. This is not incidentally mainly a religious religious book or about the Bible. It's mainly cryptozoology, but it does mention it in a, a few pages somewhere. Live Pterosaurs in America is a shorter book, very popular. A lot of people recommend it. So, we better get back to the chat, though. People are asking things. KJ, I thought I saw one in Florida once, but I now believe it might have been a frigate bird that I saw flying overhead. Now, frigate birds, I don't have an image or a video of here one right now. I, I was in the Caribbean a few years ago, and I did get some video footage of uh, frigate birds. And I use that to, to let people know so, so that they can compare that with whatever they saw. <clears throat> I should do that more often in, in different publications and videos. But yeah, it's possible that uh, a person could see a frigate bird and think it was a, a roping. It, it's happened before, at, at least once, at least, probably more than once. But generally, People are not seeing frigate birds, especially when they're in over Kansas or Utah. You know, it just doesn't make sense. All those sightings in that center of the North America. It was as large as a goose. It was attacking, not hunting. What was it attacking, uh, Q Dingle? That's interesting. Uh, friggin' frigate birds getting our hopes up. Yeah. Yeah, wide gauge. Yeah, it can be a problem with misidentification sometimes, but. Frigate birds have very limited, uh, I say, there's certain parts of the world they just don't don't go. They're oceanic birds that just stay over the ocean almost all the time, or else occasionally a little bit over a, a coastline close to the ocean, but not deep into to the continent of North America or deep into Africa or deep into Europe or anything like that. <coughs> and frigate birds do not actually look a lot. Ropens are often seen with a long neck. Frigate birds look like they don't have a neck. <clears throat> so there are different there are definitely differences so we get good participation here now we're getting more people than usual that are watching this is really good a lot of people right now let's get let's get going let's go wherever people want to go with it hey Jay, i was right along the gulf of mexico near the beach oh gulf of mexico yeah that's interesting we have sightings in, in that area too, all over Mexico, Texas, southeast Texas, you know, right by the Gulf of Mexico. A lot of sightings. And one time in the 1980s, lots of newspaper. And I was planning on dedicating this video tonight to newspaper accounts of modern pterosaurs. And I then I got this other idea. I thought, wow, wait a minute. We got this video and uh, from this... Uh, uh, Brian Harley, we better go into other things about images, photographs, video, 
and sketches of modern pterosaurs for tonight, and maybe a week from tonight or two weeks from tonight, we'll get into newspaper articles on it. But in the 1980s, near the Gulf of Mexico and Texas, were many the many newspaper reports and sightings kept coming in. <clears throat> people, some people started to think, well, maybe. That was just some scare. People thought they're pterodactyl, so they thought they saw a pterodactyl when they didn't. Much more to it than that. Much more complicated than that. I'll tell you. And KJ, I'd be interested in seeing the newspaper account video in the future. Yeah, we, we should get uh, dedicate one evening, one afternoon evening, uh, to the newspaper articles. And some of them are... I was behind some of them getting to the to the newspapers and reporting things and they would interview me or whatever or print what I had or or a lot of them were actually newspaper artists before I was born. I didn't have anything to do with them. You can't say that I'm behind all of them, not at all. I just some of them I was involved with. Q Dingo, it was being hostile to the seagulls because it wasn't living there normally. You'd be able to read more in my account. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> I have to get back to my Emails. It's been a while since I really looked into my emails that people send me. And I appreciate you sending me emails. I will get to them. I do get to them sometimes, and I'll, and I'll devote some time to that. Just I'm, I'm tired, kind of tied up with income tax things right now. And there's so much to prepare for for this nonprofit organization that will help fund expeditions and research and and promulgating the knowledge of, of the eyewitness testimony worldwide, including the United States, on these incredible flying creatures that appear to be non-extinct pterodactyls, modern pterosaurs. Okay. Now, we can go back again to some of the things we've been covering. I don't know the provenance of this. I don't know where it came from. It's a possibility that that might be genuine. It, it, it gives the impression of being like a part of it being like a vulture, though. It's kind of weird. This is a PTP photograph. There's another one somewhat similar to that with, with apparent Civil War soldiers around a, a thing on the ground. It's much worse looking than this. It, it just looks like a bunch of canvas that's kind of Put together to try to look like something this is much better monster picture <laughs> regardless of whether it's a real or a fake <coughs> but we've got so much evidence and, there, and please understand everybody that's been here for for the last hour hour and a half grateful you're here but some people just kind of not new and they won't know what's been going on they just got here to the video but there are certain evidences that another scientist and I have gotten a few years ago that this image called PTP, I, I called it without myself. Uh, it's better to use that, that word because there's another photograph that's simple, that's similar, but it's a different uh, photograph. The other one is definitely fake, no question. This is controversial. There's certain things about it that indicate it might be there's Clifford Piva, the physicist, said he found evidence of blood flow that had gone down either the neck or somewhere close to the neck. I don't remember exactly. I've been out of touch with him for a while. But there's a blood flow. and You can't see. I don't see it there myself. He, he said he did the in-depth research and examination. He said he saw evidence of that. And the two of us came to a, a conclusion, a tentative conclusion that is possibility, just we think is possible, that this, this might be a real uh, flying creature, an apparent ter pteranodon-like creature, not necessarily very much like a pteranodon, but similar to that, that was alive in the 1800s. It was actually drugged by the, the, the soldiers, dra dragged it uh, into the clearing. And when they set it up and the photographer took the photograph, it had not quite died. It was still holding on to life. Unfortunately, it, it was still alive when they took the photo. We're not positive of that, but we just have an indication that it's possible. Um, 
So this, uh, the belt buckles, I examined this myself. Iva didn't go into this. I went into it myself on my own initiative. But um, the exam when I examined the belt buckles and measured them very carefully, I found that, that they're slightly smaller in the image on these five soldiers that are behind. It's actually not five because BS2 and BS3, I couldn't use those. But the other ones, besides Background Soldier 2 and Background Soldier 3, the other ones uh, would be 1, um, 4, and 5. The belt buckles were a little bit smaller in the in the image in the image sense, not in the actual physical sense of the of the belt buckle, but in the image sense. <coughs> in other words, <coughs> it's very clear evidence that this is a photograph of men, at least dressed like soldiers, if they're not soldiers, whatever. They're actually standing pretty much in the positions they appear to be standing. In other words, this is not some uh, Photoshop hoax where you get men dressed as soldiers and you cut them out and you paste them and you put a no there's this that not not what happened these are men standing uh, here in this location with some object that looks certainly looks like a gigantic um, pterodactyl as they would call it or many of us would call it or technically uh, the better word might be pterosaur a parent pterosaur <clears throat> it's a real object it's not something that's just contrived entirely now, i'm not saying everything about this is genuine i'm not saying that because there could be certain parts of it that people manipulated but in general there was a large object here including the head with the real 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 men standing here and that that, that that's all real whether the image is of a, whether this actually is a real uh, dying or recently dead uh, animal or a, a hoax fake one is controversial. And with the chat, anything else? Okay, I missed some things here. Let me get back here to the to this. I don't want to miss anything else. Um, Okay, all right. Do you ever consider doing interviews? A friend of mine is filming a documentary and was thinking about contacting her. Sure. Uh, KJ, thank you for mentioning I'm I, I do interview. I, I'm interviewed sometimes. Sometimes I do interviews and sometimes people interview me. I'd be happy to do that and for whatever it is. Um, uh, television, radio, uh, online. Uh, sure. Um, I grew up here, nothing like it. I know what I saw. Yeah, well, it, they're not common. You won't, might not ever see one again. And is it Colorado? Is that Colorado, Q Dingle? KJ, where did you see it? Ding Q Dingle. I think it's, I think it's talking about Colorado in the United States. Is that it? Where would the pterosaurs roost? The trees would need to be strong. I was thinking that they would hide in thick brush in the ground during the day. Oh, there's a lot of places. This is from Pug Bahone. Oh, yeah. A lot of possibilities, and they're not common, and they're not necessarily always going to the same place. Mac said, do you think a lot of the sightings are frigate birds? Good question Mac has for it. Do you think a lot of the sightings are frigate birds? No, in terms of the whole picture, you know, I've been doing this for 18 years, interviewing people all over the world, occasionally traveling on an expedition or an excursion in the United States or I did once in Papua New Guinea an uh, expedition. So I meet people from all over the world. In general, the overall picture is no, they're not frigate birds. The the ones that are rare exceptions, this is the people that contact me very rarely uh, could that reasonably be considered a frigate bird because the details and what they uh, what they describe is not does not fit with a frigate bird. But it's possible in some cases a frigate bird could be misidentified and people might think oh it's a pterodactyl and star seed light worker i think in mountains and in caves yeah definitely in caves and i have just the last few days i won't go in this detail tonight i have some indication that and that 
possibly modern pterosaurs in North America may be more common, actually, in areas of the United States where there are more caves. I have an indication of that. It's indirect, and it's a little complicated, so I'm not going into details, but I'm saying there is some evidence now, this week, that I've gotten that indicate that there are more, they are more common, possibly, in areas of the United States where there are more caves found. Okay, we will get into that sometime. Uh, JLB, thank you for participating. It looks like teeth in the beak. Yes, this is a good point. And that's getting, it's not actually teeth. And this was pointed out by the, the scientist Clifford Piva. Uh, let's get into this, the head of the creature. Yeah, it's not literally teeth. In other words, <coughs> this could be a structure, this what we call, we could call pseudo teeth, where there are indentations and unevenness in the beak, but it's not actually literal teeth like in mammals, for example, or in uh, reptiles, for example. Not in that sense, uh, but they are, could be an unevenness that has the basic same function as teeth, where it can grab a hold of something, but not literally teeth, probably not. Um, the Navajo said, don't whistle at night in one interview, or evil will come down on you. Ooh. Oh, I can, I can empathize with that. John, you mentioned whistling in New Guinea. KJ, thanks. I respect the decline. I will report to John for now. Okay. Um, Mac, do you think pterosaurs feed on bats since bats also live in caves? That's an excellent question, Mac. And I have um, one or two videos on this channel, Protect Animal Life, which I uh, have... Whew, way over 100 videos now on this channel. I think it's the biggest channel on YouTube for these modern flying pterodactyls. So, but yeah, there's definitely um, <clears throat> a lot of indirect indication, at least, indirectly evidence that some modern pterosaurs at least sometimes feed on bats. Yeah, yeah, but it is kind of indirect. Pelagornis chilensis has a sawtooth beak. Ah, interesting. KJ, no worries. I'll look forward to reading your account if it is published. Well, thank you, KJ. Starseed, they eat fish and mammals, so I guess so. Yeah. Q Dingo, maybe that's why bats fly out of the cave like they're escaping. I hadn't thought of it in that sense, Q Dingo. Thank you. I hadn't thought about it in that sense. Uh, of course, you have to understand, generally bats fly out of caves uh, right around dusk, right as the sun is about to set, so they can be out getting their food, whatever they eat, they'll be out at night getting their food, and then the bats will come back generally before the sun rises the next morning. <coughs> KJ, Mac got some damn biking to the next. It makes sense that they eat bats if they're nocturnal. Oh, yeah. And in San Antonio, in fact, is it San Antonio, Texas, that has so many bats that come out of a particular area? They have a bridge there, I think. Is that called the Bat Bridge or something? Am I remembering this right? <laughs> um, if I'm not mistaken, there's an area of San Antonio where there's a lot of bats that come out at night, at least certain times of the year, at least. And I have received sighting reports from that part of Texas of modern pterosaurs. It would certainly be a possibility for them to catch them. I'm trying to think of, to get a direct report. Have I ever received a direct report of somebody saying they saw one chasing a bat? I don't remember that, but I have one report in Texas where this creature was flying back and forth in an area where bats were, were, were seen to fly at nighttime. It's definitely indirect uh, indication. Starseed, I think they are nocturnal to avoid humans. Well, it certainly can help. I don't know. It could be complicated. It's, thank you for your contribution, Starseed. Yeah, that's something to think about. Uh, Max says, San Antonio had sightings of Thunderbirds. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, I was thinking of modern times. So that's interesting. That's why I'm nocturnal, because KJ. <laughs> well, be careful. 
and Matt got some the genetics any got some any recently yeah love your channel well thank you Johnny Justice thank you for coming here you, you're new here I don't recall your, your your name it doesn't ring a bell if this is your first time welcome we're, we're trying to make this every single Friday um, between about 4 30 p.m. and around 6 30 p.m. a mountain time which would be 6 30 8 30 eastern time 3 30 to 5 30 pacific time i guess and um it'll be a different subject always about modern pterosaurs pterodactyls flying dinosaurs dinosaur birds whatever you want to call them these flying creatures that are can be much bigger than bats but don't have feathers but they have bat-like wings that's what we talk about, and I'm trying to bring it out this point that this is a big, big deal. This is a big deal. <laughs> and don't pay attention to the silly uh, rumors that some people put out, including YouTube videos that go through these all these crazy things about me. They're saying, oh, it's all nonsense. Well, you notice I've, I've, I'm not often quoted by skeptics in general. Sometimes I am, but I've written over a thousand blog posts and web pages over the past 18 years about these flying creatures. And if somebody wants to know what I think and what I feel about them, look at what I've actually read or said. Not, not always, all these rumors about this, all this nonsense about trying to discredit me. Uh, not that I know of. Okay. <coughs> Mac and now I'm going to look here. We have a good number of people here now. This is a good number of people joining us. We have to continue this. We got to keep going. Um, sometimes we'll cover the potential danger that these flying creatures may be to people. <coughs> on occasion, on occasion, a person might actually be attacked. Well, that's not the normal. That's like a rare exception from the reports I get. They're not really attacking people. They have their own fish or bats or birds or whatever that they hunt and they try to catch to eat. Not generally humans, but there are important exceptions that we do need to sometimes talk about. So people are not always safe. Be aware. Ropen. What is a ropen? For anybody new here, welcome. Ropens have long tails. Uh, this is no joke. <coughs> Most scientists uh, are specialized in this branch of paleontology. It's particularly about pterosaurs. They um, will tell you that, that in general, a lot of these type of pterosaurs lived earlier earlier than the pterodactyloid type like the pteranodon <coughs> as a general rule but um you know they don't the paleontologists that specialize in the fossils of animals including pterosaurs paleontologists are not specialists in cryptozoology it's not their field of study they don't interview potential eyewitnesses of modern creatures. That's not what they do. They just don't get involved with that. Um, so you understand that what they're telling, talking about is about what they've been discovered from the fossils. And so they're skeptical of anything about modern because they think they became extinct in the, the extreme sense of all species of all types of pterosaurs, which is not scientific. There's nothing scientific about the idea that every single species of every type of pterosaur that ever lived became extinct many millions of years ago. That's not scientific. That's just an assumption. It's a, there's no science behind that, really. And you, will, you, will, you might, if you get into it, you might find sometimes that there will be a specialist, a scientist, who's honest and open enough to admit that, and we'll admit that, the possibility of modern pterosaurs. 
Inca burial stones. The pterosaur depicted stabbing its diamond tail into a human's neck. Oh, let me get back to my other browser here to see the details of that. I want to get that. Um, Q. Dingle says, I've also seen petroglyphs with dinosaurs on Inca burial stones, etc. A pterosaur is depicted stabbing its diamond tail into a human's neck. Interesting, you bring that up now, um, Q. Dingo, because I've just, in the last few weeks, like I mean, got two and a half weeks just recently, I've gotten a uh, and a report from a, a lady whose husband knows about these. He, these. He's encountered these blind creatures, long-tailed ropens, in Papua New Guinea. He is a native of Papua New Guinea. Fascinating. They can be used as a weapon, this, the tails, at least in some species, or at least in one species. And that's interesting. You you found that. Thank you very much. Uh, does a ropen have much gripping strength in its feet like an eagle? That's a good question, KJ. We need to... Uh, Think about that sometime. It depends on the species, of course, the individual species. And not necessarily will they catch with their feet. One that was seen in daylight catching a sparrow, a rope and catching a sparrow in daylight in uh, Antwerp, Ohio, it caught it with its beak, not its feet. It, it was in flying and just grabbed it with a beak and bit, bit the poor bird. And that was its lunch in the middle of the day, in a summer day. Um, Starseed, uh, we need to go in remote areas and have big equipments for filming a night vision cam with baits near a natural stream. Yeah, that's why I want to get involved with this nonprofit organization where we can get things organized and get people contributing money and also volunteering other ways to help out and research and other things and get the knowledge out and uh, tell people, get to newspapers that people know so we can get this thing going and, and Further, get the expeditions out there. Uh, JLB, how did these animals stick around this long? Well, that's a deep subject. It's hard to handle that. <laughs> it's basically different people have different opinions about how long they've been here. You know, some of my associates are actually you know, biblical young earth creationists, and they don't believe that pterosaurs lived that long ago. And I have um, seen evidence that some dinosaurs are not really that old as many dozens of millions of years old. And not all of them seem to be that way when you carbon date them and do other means of testing them for the soft tissue and the bones. Not all dinosaurs are that old. And we, I, we have much to learn still. JLB, they can fly. That's from Starseed. Uh, and Pung Mahone, their range must be, be vast. Yes, how far could they fly? They can fly huge distances if they wanted to, no doubt. They can circle the earth, I mean, some of the big ones. And that's no big deal. The range doesn't mean much. They, they go where they, they might have certain routes, certain places they know to check for food. We have that just a few miles south of me here in Utah, where apparently there's a large rope, and that may be just one, that goes to a certain part by the Jordan River here in Utah. And, and we I don't know if it's come back this this season yet or not, but it could come back any time. I can't very well find it because I have no idea what month or what year it's going to come back. So how can I spend all my time just by the river with my camera? It's, it's challenging. <laughs> Their range is huge. They, they, they travel all over. There are legends with very specific detail regarding humans attacking humans, aka fairy tales. Oh, don't get that. Typo, humans hunting dragons. Oh, oh yeah, humans hunting dragons. Absolutely. Yeah, we could have a whole session on that. Human history, dragon legends. Oh, boy. <laughs> we could spend a whole evening on that. Uh, maybe let me make a note of that. Dragon legends. Okay, this is cool. Dragon legends. Let's get into that in one of these Friday afternoon evenings. Sure. Um, and Johnny Justice, I believe the government knows about them and they don't want to believe in dinosaurs are around. around. <laughs> I don't know. I don't really get into uh, speculating on conspiracy theories. I don't know. 
it's just something beyond me. It's, it's outside my expertise. <laughs> Wide gauge, not enough predators, abundant food resources, etc. That's how they stick around so long. That's a good point, wide gauge. Wide gauge says there's not enough predators. There's plenty of food sources. Absolutely. North America? Shoo. I mean, the other day, uh, the other week, I went into a port of a, a modern pterodactyl grabbing hold of this, this lady's family dog. And it was a large dog about to carry it off. And she ran after it with a broom and prevented it, saved the dog. The dog might still be alive. It's been a, quite a few years ago. It died of old age. <laughs> but, yeah, there's things that the creatures can flee on. No, no problem. Um, okay, KJ, haven't alligators and crocodiles stay mostly unchanged for millions of years? I know that theory. That's a We could probably do one on that, but it has to do with uh, how old the fossils really are, which is actually... It's not as clear as most people would think. Um, Q Dingo, my Native American mother-in-law tells me about Thunderbirds. They're real, dangerous, so, but, are, but so are big cats. Let's be smart and respect nature's balance. Yeah, be careful around uh, anything that could be a roping or a modern pterosaur of any type. There's more than one type. Because they can be dangerous. And also the behemoth and leviathan thunderbirds come up during volcanic eruptions or during the day that another subject too when do we see them in the day that's a good question we could get into that sometime Q does your mother-in-law view thunderbirds in both spiritual and physical sense that's from kj asking q dingo star seed of light rail the advantage of flying instead of walking yeah you can travel long distance across an ocean jc G. Thank you for joining us, JCG. Glad you're here. I think you're new on the here now. Thank you so much for coming. Matt got some... Uh, okay. If you research the Loch Ness Monster, it, it said that the one pick was a toy, but there are plenty of insanely amazing picks that have been not been debunked. Okay, that's Loch Ness. Q Dingo, her ancestors have. Okay, so from Q Dingo, that was the earlier question. Max, some pictures are logs and sea, sea otters, I heard. Okay. Um, KJ agreed that it's a reminder to respect nature. Thank you. Yeah. So let me check here. We have still quite a few people here. Let's stay with it a little bit longer because uh, people are, are actively involved and in looking at at least reading and, and being part of this. <clears throat> We're here. The tonight's video is a Pterodactyl Photos, Videos, and Sketches is the title of the video. I'm Jonathan Whitcomb. We're here on these live chats every um, Friday afternoon into the early evening in the United States time zones. I generally try to start as close to 4.30 p.m. as I can for the mountain time, which would be 3.30 in the afternoon of Fridays, uh, California time or Oregon, Washington State time. Or which would basically mean 6:30 to 8:30 in the evening on the East Coast. But we have uh, these videos on the protect animal life. Watch the old yet live streams because we have a lot of things on there we discuss and get into on these ones that are already recorded. And they're on YouTube. Once we do a live stream, it's put onto uh, YouTube just as if it was a regular video, and you can watch all these older videos that we have on modern pterosaurs contact me here um we're not wrapping it up yet stay with us we're not wrapping it quite yet just a little bit more contact me here with this uh, address you can look up uh, jonathan whitcomb my name plus contact pterodactyl or flying dinosaur or something like that and you'll get the url and you'll be able to find through searching my contact form and through that, it's a very simple form, and then we can communicate by email. But you need to send me this before I can communicate with you by email. And um, uh, do you think modern pterosaur ever will ever be officially discovered as living animals? Oh, absolutely. We're getting the people are becoming more aware, and they're becoming more prepared to have their cameras ready. So of course we're going to get some better videos, and we're going to have 
somebody saying they saw one come out of a particular cave. I'm interested in that. Particular cave at a particular time at a particular day. Whoa, that's what I want to hear about. Um, and we got more comments here coming in. Oh, one after the other. Um, uh, one day through a good footage, the only way. Not potato can. <laughs> I agree with you. There are sightings of raptor-like dinosaurs by natives in Australia. There's a recent video stating it's in 2015, clearly showing a live Tasmanian tiger. Bigfoot looks like the giant ape fossils. This is all from QDingo. KJ said there's one popular image online of cowboys with a pterosaur in front of them, a barn, and it's often per displayed as real, but personally know the artist who created it. Oh, okay. <laughs> that shoots that down, shoots down that pterodactyl. Uh, there are some lock. Okay, that's about Loch Ness. There's plenty of UFO videos with correct pterosaur movement. Interesting. Thank you, thank you, Q Dingle. So I think we should though wrap it up now. We don't want to try to go way into the night. We are. We'll be back next week. Occasionally, I'll have a live stream, impromptu. <coughs> Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. And you keep keep watching the channel, keep watching for it. And thank you for everybody participating. Really appreciate this. And I hope to see you again. Come back. And um, Pug Mahone, the pterosaurs surely migrate during the winter months. They would need foliage for cover. You can enjoy this on Friday. So thank you, KJ. And uh, Tabitha Kersey, I don't think you've been here before. Thank you so much for joining us. Based on sighting reports, what difference do there seem to be between the Ropen of Papua New Guinea and the American Ropens? I don't see much difference, uh, Tabitha. I see a lot of similarities. I don't have enough details uh, to be able to say if there's a different species that lives here. I suspect it could be a different species, but I just don't, don't have enough information. Now, thank you for this channel. Thank you, JCG. I want to wonder how their migration patterns work. We could be many, many years away from anything like that. This is we could be far away from that. These are not nearly as common as many birds that migrate. These animals are not so common. Maybe sort of almost rare. And JLB, have a good weekend. Thank you so much. Thank you for this channel and showing all your knowledge. Thank you, Tabitha. We will be back. Um, especially other days too, but especially Friday early afternoon, after, late afternoon, then early evenings. And bring your questions. Um, we're going to have some good subjects coming up in the next couple of weeks. Thank you so much for being here. Um, appreciate your participation. And good night. God bless.